How's it going, guys? Well, welcome back to the Blue Shadow. Welcome back to uh, Forgotten Trace, the Thanos and Nostalgia. I keep trying to re reverse it, but... Okay, we, we're shaking it off. We're shaking off the horrific depression that Madoka was, and now we're like, jumping into the future of this depression cycle, aren't we? Oh, it's just, it's great. <laughs> it's just promising all heartache and pain we could ever imagine. But yep, yeah, we, we've been going through after like the, the critical moment after Madoka's passing. We're kind of been seeing things. And last episode, we got really surprised by looking through uh, the eyes of uh, Keigo, who is the guy who was in the hospital when Madoka like was in there too. Uh, apparently, he's one of the Zarya with a really crazy guy. Oh, shoot. What was his name? Makoto? And like Makoto could like look into people's hearts and souls and like see them for what they are. And so the two of them have already got their eyes on Kazuya, apparently. Like they're trying to figure out like, you know, I think they're trying to decide if they can use him or if they have to defeat him. And that's probably the only reason why they haven't struck yet. But um, apparently he's going to approach, uh, like the Makoto guy is gonna approach uh, Ibuki. And that's gonna be scary because he's like a genuine like psychopath. Because he just doesn't care. He sees humans as trash, and that their lives have no meaning. So, yeah, it's great. So anyway, uh, we're gonna do uh, Minato, whatever this story is. I don't know how long it'll be, and then we're gonna go to Kazia, and then I it might do more because it's kind of implying that unless this Kazia is like even Kazia and Minato, we have at least a little bit more for Ibuki and Madoka. So we'll have to see what that is. So let's start with Minato. Hojo. Madoka. Okay, okay. So that's the crazy girl who like interviewed Madoka before she went up to the roof. And he apparently is somebody who helps her. She whispers the name of the girl who's now just flesh and blood. Madoka Hyojo, the fifth foolish human. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just brush it under the rug. <laughs> Another psychopath who sees it as a sorry, he's got all the sniffles all of a sudden. Who sees it as an opportunity to learn. Man, what a joke. She rarely shows emotion, but now she's terribly indignant. It's always like this when she when we quarrel. She immediately loses her presence of mind. Even if she acts like a weirdo, she's normal after all. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's unbearably fun egging her on. Uh, maybe because she had stuff to do? もっともっと敷き詰めて聞かなければいけないことは山ほどあったでしょうに。せっかくの素材をもったいない。真実というものはたった一つの欠片から生まれ、そしてまた一つの流れに沿って生まれてくるもの。So these guys are like researching the phenomena about this. I wonder if they're not Zari as well, or if they just somehow have like kind of like stumbled upon the secrets of this. 先輩のしたことは。yeah, okay, so she's literally calling him out of a, as a psychopath. Like, is a, like, because that's somebody who do, doesn't possess the means of comprehending people's feelings. Like, that's literally what being a psychopath is. Like, granted, being a psychopath doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go crazy and kill people. But it means that you don't have that, like, empathy. Like, not even on a basic level of understanding that others feel emotions. Nor what that really means. So, like, you can see things that normally shouldn't be heart-wrenching, shocking, and all that. But you see it passively. Because there's no context for you. Nor do you want there to be context. It's just kind of like, things happen. Like, reading... Not even, like, reading a story. But it's like reading, a, like, a textbook. Like, the things that we might be emotional about, the things that make me want to, be like, well up with tears or to laugh would just be words on a page. And that's fine. I mean, sometimes that's... You can't control how you view the world. And you can't control, like, whether or not you're a psychopath or a sociopath. But 
the problem is that without in a without like that like empathy it's kind of like a natural inhibition that prevents people from being truly like sadistic like truly truly not just like playing around i'm talking like literally killing people that's why psychopaths are often uh like a lot of serial killers are labeled psychopaths because there's just this weird almost inhuman nature to them where they don't seem to understand feel or even want to understand emotions it's just that's just a trait of it and like when you don't have that as an inhibition it, it's easy to see people as objects not as individuals and thus you can treat them like trash you can justify it because in your eyes it's really no point it's a really interesting scary thing to think about but it's always very good to like like be aware of that like a it's a real thing and b it doesn't inherently make you a bad person <laughs> Emotions and such are ridiculous. That's why you're weak, Sherry. Kawaiso. So, that's why you're weak, Sherry. Kawaiso. So, that's why you're weak, Sherry. Kawaiso. They could become thoroughly powerful. Like, okay, I'm not crazy, right? This isn't the guy who can peer into people's souls. He had, like, headphones around his neck or something. Like, but he's so similar to them. So this is like layers upon layers. So the black tortoise, like they're, like they're the mansions of the black tortoise, but there might be other groupings of people with powers of the other branch. Fetch, man, this is getting freaking wild. Pretending not to know, even though you're collecting information on the point you created this is the point you created this club. She really is quite human. あなたにそう言われると非常にイラつくわ。部長何と なんと愚かで無粋な関係だとは思いませんか。うん。人と人との交わりなど、お互いの損得感情としての利害関係が一致した時、初めて成り立つものなのでは。I that's like that's the other reason. I mean, in the strictest of senses, they're not connected at all. The movement of the moon is very ambivalent to the movement of the stars. And the stars that make constellations are far more distant from each other than they appear. We are the ones that make pictures out of them. There's nothing about them that really correlates their their connection at all. So whatever this Nozaria stuff is, it has to do with people, not actually the stars. Minato. 
。関係を持ちましょうよ。信頼関係ってやつ。お互いの利害関係を一致させてね。あなたは信用できないわ。<笑>まあいいです。いずれわかることですから。ははこれから、楽しくなりますね。Oh, yeah, sure、it is. あの男がどういった行動をとりそしてどう自分の道を突き進んでいくのかあの男 Walking the path of destruction swallowed by thorns suffering I'm going to enjoy watching that man I will finally be able to say goodbye to these terribly boring days それにしても死人はたった5人もっとくたばるかと思っていましたが僕の想定外でしたねね、先輩先輩の友人もあんなミラとそれ以上言ったら許さないわよ So maybe she, she had a friend who was one of the first to commit suicide That might have been why she's like in invested in all this The moment I say those keywords she blinds herself with rage She's beside herself with rage It's truly easy to control her emotions Even though I tell her irritation will overshadow all else Why didn't she realize it? She really, she's really foolish. <laughs> 確かにこれは失礼でしたね。そのお詫びとして、先輩に一つプレゼントを差し上げますよ。何ですって近々、この僕主催の素晴らしいエキシビジョンを開催するんです。Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. 先輩には、特別にチケット不要で、無料招待いたしますよ。I don't want to know any kind of exhibition you want to give. I don't care. I, at this point, it's going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. So, I'm going to be a flesh museum, it feels like. Oh no. So he somehow is using these people as guinea pig. What the fetch is he gone about? Oh no, f e t t e r he's gone about. Oh no, fetter 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 he's gone about. そんな身勝手な行為はねえ先輩この謎を解き明かしたいのでしょう先輩のようにちんたらやっていたのではあと何十年かかることやら僕が暴いてみせますよこのすべての謎をね先輩もご存知でしょ今まで成し遂げられた幾多もの成功とは残酷なまでの現実そして必要不可欠な犠牲の上に成り立ってきた代物なんだってこと Uh, yeah, yeah, because you could totally just use that as, as, you know, like, obviously, like, all the sacrifices were just, you know, inevitable, and thus you must, might as well just cut to the chase and make sacrifices to get it on with. Daitai, so n a nihki no h o n u r u o i t s u k u s i n d e nan no imi ga aru te yundesu? Like, why? Ai da no, koi da no, so n a muku are nai mukachi na genso ni i t s m a d e m o s i g a m i t s u i t e i r u kara, michi o miu s h i n a i o b o r e I feel like he's trying too hard. Yeah. Punk. So, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. 周りからどう吠えられようが責め立てられようが何だって言うんです僕からすれば周りに流され自分を見失うことこそ浅はかな行為。うん。I don't know. I don't agree with the philosophy he's depicting there because at the same time it's like, like laws and structure and morality or whatever you want to give it like The structure we self impose on ourselves as a, as a species is a big part of what's helped us naturalize towards progress because we can do things like compensate for each other, teamwork, thinking together. Like this attitude of like, like tossing yourself and flinging yourself in almost an anarcho type of drive. This idea that like that the more that people want to be a part of something, the less you should desire it because then you're, because then you're becoming like part of a sheep herd kind of mentality. 
And like, I understand wanting to be individualized. Heck, I could even understand the idea of being hipster, you know, like this idea of wanting to like be unique and have something about you that's different and like a talking point. What he's describing as a philosophical point of view is that because you don't want to be like everybody else, you should kick it, get the bits and like, like do everything you can to like disrupt the way the order of things happening and the way things progress naturally. And that that's, I think, so far to be like kind of like to it's so simplistic and like tantramental to say like, oh, people would make all this progress if they just shut all their emotions off. But I'm also going to advocate destroying everything that made progress possible, including things like the invention of the computer I'm using, because I don't want to be like toting the line with all the other people. Hey, you're you're all talk, sir, but you really don't understand what you're actually saying. If that's actually a philosophy you're toting, I think you're just saying things for shock value because you think it makes you sound cool. Like if you really play things out to their actual extent, and this isn't even like, like a straw man fallacy of the saying, like assuming the worst case, like it's a summary of effectively the point he's trying to make here is that like doing things the way that everyone else does it and like beholding to things like rules, regulation, restriction are, are just a means to just like dull your senses and to, to kind of make you part of a hordeless mass when it's the hordeless mass is actually more effective as a team working together in our own individual ways than any one of us alone. Very much like cells of the body. Take one of our cells from our body and put it on its own. It's useless. It's, it could do some things, but it's just pointless. It's just going to die. It's the orchestra of the billions and trillions of cells working together, each doing their role, supporting one another, that makes an am- amazing miracle of our existence possible. So I fully reject your... Output here, Minato. Ima no zok seken wa tota sare suite shimate. Mina, onaji ona fukuokite, onaji kamen o kabri, onaji kangae o motte shimate. Kose no kakera mo kanjira denai. Maru de kono sekai no nagare ni chujitsu ni shitaga robotto de aruka no yoni. Boku no kangae no nani ga machigate iru te yundesu. Yes, because, like, you only aren't seeing that because you're refusing to. If you actually examined each person, you would understand that each person does have individual needs and desires and hopes and dreams and actions and motivations. And that each person, as the fact that we all have different bodies that manifest different ways, each person's individual, yet you can still say that we are very similar. I mean, heck, look at things like bananas. We share the same amount of the, the genetic code that makes up a human is like 90% the same as a banana. There's so much difference there, but at its core, there's a lot of similarities. He's seeing only the similarities and omitting the differences and then claiming there aren't any. It's just, it's, it's one of the most amazing fallacies of logic I've actually come across. <laughs> Now that is a fair point, but the thing is that you can't say that as a validation for your former point, which is the fact that everyone's the same and nobody's any different. It takes three people to realize that you have three completely different individuals. You could even take two, but then the thing is that with two, it's not a really good data set. Uh, so like the idea is like, it, it, the only reason he sees things the way he does is because he literally just, just discounts the points of views of others. It's easy to make an argument that everyone's the same when you literally dismiss any evidence to, contrary to the fact. It's very similar to what I see in uh, Flat Earthers when like, occasionally I'll see the posts that they'll make or the, uh, the, the positions they take. They only see the data that they think supports them, and they dismiss the data as flawed that doesn't support their, their position. I also see it a lot in politics. It's this idea of polarization that I am right, and because I'm right, I'm going to find the truths that make me feel validated, rather than looking for truths objectively and then drawing conclusions. It's a very flawed way of thinking, and it's going to make him be stupid. It's going to help him justify what sounds like terrible things, because he just needs a reason to do it. Even he's driven by a kind of morality code, but simply one that he's self-imposing because he doesn't feel like he has to bother with other people, but he also likes the idea of flashing and toting his, his like, his, and flaunting his position. I, Minato, you're a horrible philosopher. 
己の正しいと思う道を突き進んでいるだけに過ぎないんですあなた狂ってるわ I mean he is crazy <laughs> that's the ultimate praise to me this is good just like this this is my ideal environment <laughs> そうですこの世界は狂っている Why does this world always let, the, let those kinds of people have their way? Why does this world continue to leave behind such disruptive elements? That's why I, no, I'm the only one who can. I'll purge them. What of the black tortoise? What of its unprecedented power? Will that save lives? Will that save everything? You've got to be kidding me. I'll rip off its mask. I'll expose all your lame powers. The characteristics and activation requirements of your abilities are mostly in my hands. I'll show you. You guys who have led my efforts to, who have led my efforts to collapse, I'll give you a bitter experience likes of which you've never seen. Then I'll prove it. How I'm far loftier, my, how I'm a far loftier existence than you guys. But before that, Kazuya Nanami, I'll test your caliber. <laughs> I just. I'm disappointed by you, Minato. You're just kind of a, a hollow fraud. So stuck up your own butt. You can't. You, and he's stuck up his butt so far, he claims the sun doesn't exist because he's never seen it before. <laughs> Minato, you're a fool. But if you're an empty life, it's the same as the same as the worthless fool lying over there. At that time. <laughs> well, aren't you fun? Alright, now go see Kazuya, because I'm sure this is going to be fun to see. She... She... No way. Such a thing. How, how could something like this happen? After she falls, I just stand there dumbfounded. I can't move like I'm encased in ice. It's like time is frozen. Only the wind on this rooftop ceaselessly sticks in my ears. I can't believe it. Right in front of me, a person. The sound of the wind gradually changes into a blend of screams and commotion. Right now, the school building below us is probably in an uproar. I'm scared and can't look down there. It feels like I'm under the delusion I killed her. I should have been able to protect her. I mean, you were really close, but... I mean, there's only so much you can do. Even if she decided to commit suicide, I, I should have been able to protect her. I should have restrained her, no matter what it took. And yet, why? Even though I was close enough to hear that song. Why? When I heard the song, I was assaulted by a strange sensation like some other thoughts were mixing in with mine. I got distracted and all my thoughts went into that direction. Dang it! I should have paid no attention to that song, forcefully grabbed her clothes, and pulled her back. I couldn't even save a single girl. Just a deep despair and sadness assail my mind. Ibuki, right now, what kind of expression does Ibuki have? She probably, she's probably crying. It hurts, and I can't look at Ibuki's face. Ibuki, you were best friends. You were always helping and encouraging each other. Ibuki, I, I... I couldn't protect your precious, your precious person. That's when it happens. There's a dull sound behind me. What was that? Right now, it's only me and Ibuki here. No way. Ibuki! I immediately turn around and find Ibuki collapsed there. Ibuki! Ibuki's hair splayed out on the ground looks just like a blood, the blood, uh, look, just, looks just like blood and I break out of a sweat. Oi! Oi, Ibuki! Ibuki! I run over to her in a hurry. Yeah. Hmm. I pull her into my chest and she weakly calls my name, then closes her eyes, slowly like she's going to sleep. <laughs> There's no reply. No. No way. I call her name repeatedly, but there's never there's no reply. What the heck? Is it I I'm guessing like it's shock and maybe her heart condition kind of put together. Why did it turn out like this? Ibuki. Nah, Ibuki. Answer me. I'm begging you, Ibuki. Ibuki. 
。俺の声、聞こえるか息吹 ?No way, her heart disease? You're kidding, right now? No way. I. It's my fault. It's because I couldn't save that girl. Crap. I need to get Ibuki to the hospital immediately. Ibuki, Oh, yeah, this is not a good time to be needing to call for help. Everyone's yelling for people. I yell at the days. I put all my strength into my voice. No matter how I yell, my voice is drowned out by the wind on the rooftop and the repeated screams from the school building below. Crap. Ibuki. Why? Why did it turn out like this? I don't know, can you freaking carry her, dude? You could, you got your leg again. Even though I just swore that I'd protect her. Ibuki. Yeah. Could you gently smile like you always do? And energetically talk to my ear off like always? Kazuya. Kazuya. Right. That's how it is. Hey, come on. Who is that talking? Is that himself? Okay, I understand you're upset, but do something! The moment I yell this, I feel my vision shake violently. Then, like I'm being swallowed by darkness, I'm enveloped in that sensation and my vision is gradually dyed black. What the heck? What is going on? Why is this happening? <laughs> what the heck is happening to me? Suddenly, a strange, suffocating, heart rending emotion enters me. What the heck? The moment. <laughs> what the? <laughs> okay. Somewhere in my head, a voice calling my name echoes. Who? They're calling my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're definitely calling my name. I look around the rooftop, but it's only me and Ibuki here I hear right now. And yet, I don't feel good. My vision's died even blacker. Is this the guy reaching into his mind or something else? <laughs> that uncanny voice doesn't respond to my inquiry. The low and empty sound of the wind further incites the eeriness. Are you effing with me? Even though Ibuki is in this condition? I don't have time to deal with this kind of guy. When I grab Ibuki and make the stand up, strength suddenly leaves my body. <laughs> my body crumples. All strength leaves my arms. And I can only watch over Ibuki as she lays un unceremoniously on the asphalt again. Not just that girl. I can't even grasp Ibuki with these hands. It's like Ibuki's gone far away. That pain together with the darkness that is covering my vision. It's further beating me into terror. Can I not save her? Not even Ibuki? Crap. Ibuki. My vision is completely shut off by darkness. Only a mysterious voice echoes from the depths of that darkness. Koi, koi, koi. Kazuya. Kazuya, Kazuya, Kazuya. Who the heck are you? My consciousness fades. What's in my mind until the last moment, until my thoughts completely stop, is her looking at me with her usual warm smile. The same old Ibuki. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that wasn't confusing at all. Let's jump into the phase two of Kazuya. Nanda, nani mo mienai. Heck of I know, man. Welcome. Welcome to the entire... Welcome to the entire video, Kazuya. None of us knows what's going on. What do I understand? Is this cold that I feel throughout my body? Is he back in the snow place? We are. We're back. When I open my eyes, what's spreading out before me is a familiar scenery. What? Why am I here again? What the heck? That's right. This is the white world I saw in that dream that time. I get up and brush the snow off myself. Why? Why? I was on the roof until a minute ago. And yet, 
The moment I heard that voice calling me, I came to this dream again. No, what's more important than this situation is Ibuki. Ibuki couldn't have gotten lost in here too, could she? Like that girl that jumped, who entered my dream? Ibuki! 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 Goko da! Goko ni iru! No matter how much I yell, there's no response. My voice is just swallowed by the white, empty space. If this is a dream, hurry up and wake me up! But as if to drown out such thoughts, the falling snow pierces my skin and steals my body heat as usual. Yeah. Crap! If Ibuki's here, I need to hurry and find her. Her body's weak. She won't be able to endure this kind of cold. That's when I feel someone's gaze. Ibuki? I get my hopes up for a second and turn around, but there's no one there. No, this gaze is... It's the same gaze as the first time I entered this dream. It's a creepy, strange gaze. What the heck is this? The continuation of that dream? No, this is the same thing happening over again. Having the same dream twice, that shouldn't be possible. Oh, I contraire. I absolutely have the same dream multiple times. In fact, I actually have running narrative dreams occasionally, where the dream will kind of do a, like a like a brief review of the last moments of the last time I had the dream, but it'll have the same setting, same character, same like everything. And then it continues on from where that is. I tend to have these dreams recurringly over the course of years. I actually have written some of them down in like journals and such that I actually still have in storage. Really fascinating things. I love dreams. And mine are incredibly vivid, varied, and like it's interesting because sometimes I will dream about people I know and then other times I'll invent people, but I feel like in the dream I know everything about them, like their family or friends that I just know like in every way, but then when I wake up it all fades away as if it was nothing. It's brilliant. I love dreaming and I'm very happy that I have very, very, very powerful dreams. Furthermore, this gaze, it's more distinct than that time. It's so creepy, it's giving me goosebumps. The gaze follows me around and fans the terror. What the heck is happening inside of me? That Madoka girl fell to her death. Ibuki saw that and collapsed, and now I'm here again for some reason. The Dipper Mansion, North Zarya, Fate, the dreams that the girl had, the dream I had, the snowy forest. What the heck? What is going on? She told me. My fate. In which in which case, does that mean me being here right now was decided by fate? I just don't know anymore. My head is in a confusion. In this cold, my consciousness is getting hazy too. Not knowing what's what, I'm about to hang my head and collapse forward from the knees. I hear a low voice of a man from the direction of the gaze. A number of times. <laughs> well, that didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> I reflexively raised my voice. I really, this is one of those times where I really don't like I'm listening to surround sound headphones. Ugh. It's like, literally, it feels like the voice is coming from every direction. <laughs> Huh. I wonder if that's Ray. What? What are you saying? This voice is completely different from the one I heard in the moment I fell. Who is it this time? Who? The heck? The moment I realized this, and immediately after finding out the gaze I'd been, fa I'd been feeling as human, I break out in a cold sweat. Because the gaze from that time was like that of a beast. Well, it wasn't a beast. So should I be relieved that this is better? No, I'd be sca more scared of a human. But what the heck is this? That voice cut out here and there. Oi! I raise my voice and suppress the trembling, but there's no reply. My surroundings begin to re retain their silence again, but the creepiness of being watched doesn't abate in the, sl in the least. Thanks to the fear, my pulse quickens and my body gets hot. But the trembling won't debate. What the heck? Why am I shaking so much? You've got to be effing kidding me! In front of me, I can see big trees and their shadows. The voice came from that direction. I make a snowball with a fing with my fingers trembling from the fear. Being sure to suppress the trembling, I yell really loud and throw the snowball with great force in that direction. 
The snowball hits a big tree, and the snow on the branches falls everywhere from the impact. But there's no reaction. I swallow my fear cautiously, approaching step by step and peek behind the tree, but there's no one there. I timidly peek behind a number of trees, but the voice's owner is nowhere to be found. I'm a bit relieved at the fact. Before, I threw my cell phone, didn't I? This is me repeating the thing from that dream again? The moment I realize this, the creepy gaze is already gone. What the heck? This is like someone is manipulating all my actions. No, that can't be. No way. Crap. I decided earlier that I'd protect Ibuki. And yet right now, I'm trembling this much. I clutch my shaking fist. There's no way I could protect Ibuki like this. Even though I need to change. Even though I have to protect Ibuki from the terrifying battle. No way. This terrifying battle. I realize I said it myself. The battle between North Zarya and that girl spoke of. Does this mean it's already started? What if the voice's owner is actually a North Zarya with a terrifying ability? Crap! If Ibuki's here, I need to hurry up and find her. I support my I suppress my anxiety and start running. Certainly doesn't sound like running. I knew it. This is the same landscape as that dream. The same forest. And furthermore, for some reason, no matter how many different paths I take, only the scenery of the first one I took appears. What the heck is this? It's like there's only one predestined route in this wide world. Unable to oppose it, I follow the same path. Why did it turn out like this? If this is the same as the dream from that time, if I walk this path... Yep, there they are. Footprints. The footprints that gave me hope then. This is the same as the dream, but one piece of the scenery appears different from that time. Red specks are sprinkled here and there as if the color of the footprints. Those flecks show up distinctly against the purest white snow. Yeah, I see him now. That's never a great sign. It's blood. A shiver goes down my spine. What the heck? Why is there blood in a place like this? It's creepy. Whose blood is this? That woman's? Or whoever that voice belonged to? It couldn't be Ibuki, could it? Those red specks continue along the, with the footprints. Are these the traces of the battle she talked about? Could it have already started? Ibuki. Ibuki! I'm worried about Ibuki. No freaking way! I could never have guessed! Just like the time I start running, the I start running, following the footsteps. It really does feel like someone has preordained this. Entering this dream, going down this path, following these footsteps. All of it. If it's like that dream, then about here the footprints will... But contrary to my expectations, the footprints continue. What the heck? Last time they definitely disappeared around here. Am I mistaken? I pray that I won't find Ibuki covered in blood and in intently follow the footprints. Just how far do they continue? In the instant I'm thinking this, I become stuck in a deep spot of snow and fall over. Floomp. This is like that dream too. I whisper as I look up at the starry sky spread out before me. This world. I've only been thinking one thing for a while now. This forest resembles the dream I saw the first time, but there are subtle different deviations occurring. That voice and the blood earlier? What the heck is this? No, before that, looking for Ibuki is the first priority. The moment I go to stand up, I hear the voice from that time. A familiar voice. Kazuya. Okay. That's right. It's my own voice. Okay, that's a little creepy. I ask myself, you again. I whisper ironically, but the voice doesn't stop. Shut up. I don't have time to talk to you right now. I need to hurry up and save Ibuki, me. What? Are you saying I can gain something by talking to you? Or me? And so current me is me, and, and you are future me? No, I don't need you anymore. I've changed. I'm different from the past me. So maybe the past me. The past and current me. Right now I'm... Yeah. I've become a little pos uh, positive. Thanks to that girl. 
I reply thusly to my other self. I wonder. But I've learned that the various people are helping me, supporting me. I've also found something to protect. I was able to change. Well, sorry. You're wrong. That's... I... Even I... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm worried about Ibuki more than anything else. I... Or are you? Now, this is an interesting question. I wonder if your subconscious isn't all that worried about Ibuki in the reality. I'll protect Ibuki. Because it's perfectly reasonable? I'm not afraid. I'm not scared of anything anymore. Oh, snap. Calling it out. Throwing shade on yourself. You're wrong. I'm not full of myself. Wait. Think about this for a second. How are you not full of yourself? You're literally talking to yourself. How much more full of yourself can you be? <laughs> a main character. No. I want to protect Ibuki, that's it. Mm. Stop. Cut it out. It's different from then. I... I... You don't just change in an instant. Decided. No matter what happens, I'll protect Ibuki. He does himself pretty well, doesn't he? Stop. I've changed. I've definitely changed a little. Thanks to that girl. I've found myself again. You're wrong. I... Or even yourself. Someone's voice passes through my head again like that that time. Uh, stop it! I vigorously stand up and drown out that voice. I can change. No, I have changed. My weak self, my painful past. I have to confront, part, flirt with, and overcome such things. I'll protect Ibuki. For that one resolution. That's when the melody reaches my ears again. I doubt my ears and wonder if I'm hearing things, but it seems I'm not. This singing is clearly coming from where the footprints lead, the depths of the forest. This nostalgic lullaby that makes it feel like my chest is tightening. The lullaby from when I met the woman that stirred fate. This is the same as the dream, too. The only thing different is, this time it's not a woman. It's the voice of a man. Weird. What's going on? Is it different from that dream after all? I don't get it. But what the heck? Why why even in this situation, when I hear this song, does my heart feel calm and relaxed? Why am I filled with such a sense of nostalgia? I feel like I'm about to cry even now and squeeze my eyelids shut. What the heck is it all about this lullaby? Because I was distracted by this lullaby, she the frustration from that time was up again. But right now, right now, Ibuki's safety is my top priority. Ibuki might be in this direction. I get impatient. Before I realize it, my legs are running toward that singing. Just like the dream I had that time. I run in pursuit of the sh singing, but the footprints that I kept, I kept going, going stop in front of me. Of course, the person who made them isn't there. The worst case scenario of Ibuki being collapsed there covered in blood spent a considerable amount of time in my mind. But I'm relieved to find that that idea was off the mark, Ibuki. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Truly. But I still have one question. In the previous dream, the footprints didn't come this far. What the heck does that mean? The deviations from that dream are the springing up in this overlapping scenery. Well, even if I think about this again, I'm not going to find any answer. For the time being, I'll follow the singing. I start running again. Okay, yep, this is definitely different. And when I follow the singing, just like in the dream, I come to that lake again. There's a single man standing there on the lake's edge, forlornly humming the lullaby. His figure is strange. He's in a uniform with the tattered clothes wrapped around him. 
The uniform and clothes are extremely mismatched. Who is that? The moment I whisper this, I'm assailed by sorrow that feels like something is clamping down on my heart. I hope we don't. Are we gonna end up kissing this guy too? And is it us? What is the sensation? My chest burns in agonizing pain. I try to speak, but as my throat has gone hoarse, the world the words won't come out. All the while, the man continues to sing the lullaby, as if to make my heart waver. It's terrible, heartrendingly beautiful. This melody. Step by step into the lake again. As I walk, I'm being pulled in by that man. Perhaps because my nerves are focused on finding out the man's true identity, I don't feel much pain right now. Not the chill of the lake or the cold on my skin. Who are you? I'm not scared. Why? For some reason, maybe because these feelings of sorrow are headed forward, the man's back gets closer. As it does, my pulse gradually quickens. What the heck? Every time I get closer to this man, the sorrow wells up in me even more. Why am I so... Well, maybe it's this lullaby's fault. Maybe the lullaby is fueling my emotions. Or that's when the song suddenly stops. At the same time, the man begins to speak with his back to me. Yeah, he says this like he was waiting for me. Just now, he said Kazuya. Why does he know my name? That time, the woman in this lake knew my name too. What's going on? いずれわかるだろう。それより白金伊吹を助けたいなら、まず俺の話を聞け。お前のこれからの行動によって、その女の命は左右される。Oh boy, Ibuki. Why does he know about Ibuki? No way. Did he? Ibuki はどこだ。答えろ。お前が Ibuki を、Ibuki はどこかへやったのか。落ち着け、カズヤ。彼女はここにはいない。She's not here. What does he mean? That it was just me who came to this place again? But I can't believe what some guy I don't know says. I raise my voice and yell again. Safe? How does he know that she's safe? I want to believe that Ibuki is really safe. I want to believe that, but... Uh, yeah, a little bit much, huh? なるほど。お前が今ここにいる理由を考えろ。感じるんだ。この白銀の世界に頼る。命の揺らめき。そして絶望の縮まを。それは全て。お前の世界に流れる。過去も。現在。そして未来さえも暗示しているのだ。The why does he know about me and Ibuki? The time, the one who called my name on the roof. Could it be... Okay. He nods like it's extremely obvious. This man called me here. Just me. If I decided to swallow his story, that would mean Ibuki isn't here after all, but... Hmm. He doesn't have a grasp on this world either. Could it be... He called me to this world, but doesn't know? Okay, transient world. Like a, like a space between? Hmm. A world that's a mixture of people's memories. What the heck does that mean? In short, he doesn't really know. Then does this mean he also doesn't have any connection with the woman I met here the first time? I'm making a dubious expression when he deliberately opens his mouth to speak. Then he strongly utters my name. Okay. Natsaria. Dipper Mansion. This man says the same things as the girl. The fear wells up again. A life in which I'm going to have to fight terrifying people in the days to come. Have I really been placed into such a fate? If so, this man... It's you. Perhaps because my voice is trembling, the man laughs as if he whispers. 
何をそんなに怯えているんだ俺はお前の敵でも味方でもないだが己のたどるべき宿命に押しつぶされるようなら俺はお前を躊躇なく殺すぞ Oh, I misclicked, sorry カズヤ、わかるかお前が突き進むべき星図が The star map you're proceeding along, interesting その宿命が Neither friend nor foe? Then why did this man call me here? What I heard from her was that the Nordzaria fight to destroy their own fates. And those Nordzaria are aiming for me. In which case, I, what was his goal in calling me here? It wasn't for the battle between the Nordzaria. Do you think I'm not going to be able to do that? Well, I'll tell you about this. I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to be able to do that. I knew it. This man is one of the seven of Zarya. In which case, why doesn't he come and kill me? Is it true that he's neither friend nor foe? Okay. So he's gonna get like some kind of like Goku other world training? 必ず心に留めておけ。俺が誰なのか。それは<咳>いずれわかるさ。Okay. To teach me everything about the Dipper Mansion. That's what he called me here for. I'm painfully aware that this is the first time I'm meeting one of the people and known as Nosaria. <咳> Cold sweat runs from my temples and my heart pounds somewhat violently. My throat is dry and sticky. Teach me. Like how you teach someone to juggle or soccer ball or something? He isn't talking about that level of things. He said it earlier. That is, that if it seems I'm going to be crushed by fate, I am、uh, the fate I am to follow, he would kill me without hesitation. In other words, he's saying I have to put my life on the line. Yes? <laughs> yes, that's true. This guy. He even knows about her. Because he イブキを助けたいなら俺の話を聞けってまあだったらどうしたらいいんだよ So that he won't sense my trembling I stare at him and ask with a raised voice At that moment he suddenly turns around なら俺と共に来るかカズヤ That's absolutely Kazuya isn't it? It's like him from the future or something The man strongly calls my name and stretches his hand out straight out As if he's offering it to me. いい顔だ。少しは俺の話を聞く気になったということか。Yeah, I wonder. So he talked about this place being a transient place. It's a transient world of memory. And he talked about how like, it links the past, the present, and the future. So perhaps future Kazuya understands enough to be able to send his own memories back in time through this place to instruct his former self, closing a loop. But that's why he obscures himself because he already did so in order to help build this relationship of master and student and not break his brain. His face is half hidden by the cloth, and I can't determine who this is, even close up. But it's like I can see this man's strength in his sharp eyes as, as, that seems to hide his intent. Ah, come on. I still can't trust everything about this man, but at the very least, he's probably not my enemy. If he were, I'd be long dead. Also, this guy definitely holds the key to saving Ibuki. I can feel it. 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 Right. 
だからこそだ聞くんだカズヤ The man wrapped in the strange cloth cuts me off and starts talking again. ノーザリアには己の持っている能力に段階がある。ああ、OK、そう、パワーキンモー。能力初期段階をセリオスと呼ぶ。今現在、能力覚醒しているノーザリアたちはこの段階だ。無論、この俺もセリオスだ。だが、そこから能力進化を促し、ノーザリアを不可視の彼方へと躍進させる。もう一段階の能力覚醒。さらなる能力の領域が存在するのだ。それは DNA の極限への解放を意味する。Liberation from the limits of DNA? What? Like evolution? Like evolving yourself? その名をクエーサーフィラメント。クエーサーフィラメント。この力は幾多の星たちに息づく神々をも滑ることができる。無双の能力解放と言われている。ここまでたどり着けばお前は必ずこの戦いに勝つことができる。Well, naturally, you become a de-、uh, effectively a minor god at that point. Sure, nothing could beat you. I can't do it. 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 I can't do Oh, great. Yeah, I'm sure it won't be hard at all. 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 What does he mean? Is he testing me? Or maybe he really is my enemy and he's lying to me to make me let my guard down. But even if I think like this, there will be no end to it. In any case, I'm not finding any other option or method or anything other than believing this man. Hey. Now I'm going to go to the next one. That's right. I have to. That's right. I have to. Madoka Hyojo and this man. She was desperately trying to convey something to me. And this man is trying to convey the same thing she was. Yeah. Right now, I can only believe in them and fight to protect Ibuki. <laughs> その虚勢がいつまで続くか見ものだな。カーネスブラック。早くそれを俺に教えてくれどのノーザリアよりも早く得得してやるだから、うぬぼれるなと言っただろう。それに少し、語弊があるな。あの男よりも早く、だな。なんだって王女マドカに聞いたろう。おぉ、ミュージック。ノーザリアの中で、一番始末の悪い相手、琥珀流昇能力の使い手。Oh. Okay, so this is he a god? これまでに覚醒した者たちの中でもおそらく史上最強のノーザリアだろう。少なからず、奴が最初で最後のクエーサーフィラメントの覚醒を促す使い手になるはず。So only one person can become the quasar filament. しかしか。いや、あと数日のうちになる。Are you just days? だったら、だったら俺が、それしか方法はないんだろ。虚勢に凄みが増してきたな。いい答えだ。ナナミカズヤ、奴は。お前がセリオスに目覚めた途端、お前の命を剥ぎ取りに必ず目の前に現れ、right. お前の命と能力を欲しているのだ。今のお前では、奴に退治した瞬間、能力の希薄に縛り付けられ、即座に生き絶えるだ。この俺の力がどこまで引き出せるかはわからないが、お前に、奴と戦う覚悟があるのなら教えよう。Right. その血脈に流れる、都市区の真の使い方を。I feel like we're getting like a leap to the, to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to the end here. I feel like we're getting like a leap to That feeling alone holds back the terror of the life and death battle that could potentially be coming. Yes, that feeling alone. It inspires my resolve. 
When I respond with this, the face of the man that's hidden by that strange cloth seems to relax for a moment. I get that feeling. Interesting. この俺の思いと重なり合い、ななみかずや。その最後の言葉、自分の名を呼んだ。さっきは味方じゃないなんて、そう言っていたけど。この俺はなぜか、勝手にそう思ってしまった。それは、俺の名を呼んだその言葉
Okay, so now what? Okay. So, okay, so it's like, this is just like the added credits for um, for Bat Factory. Okay, so, yeah, all right. So in those last bits, there were definitely like screenshots of pictures and def like characters we haven't even met yet. And so like, they've definitely got like production for like the story continuing on. There were scenes and stuff that we definitely haven't seen. So like, where is this going to go? I wonder. Okay. Yep. There's definitely something different here, but I need to save and then we're going to have to end here. I have no idea how much more is left, but, uh, no. Yeah. So here's. I have no idea where we are. Like, if I go back up, it says, like, Kazuya and Madoka have 90, like, haven't been finished yet. So I wonder if there's, like, maybe that's indicating that I missed something or made a wrong choice. Like, because there were a couple choices I made. Maybe I clicked the wrong ones that didn't let me see some paths. Who knows? But we're going to be starting this next part, whatever it is. Maybe it's just a continuation just to kind of help us understand. But yeah, it's just weird. Like, why did we get, like, a title crawl if the game continues? And I, it makes me think, like, is the game only going to have, like, 10 minutes left of content? And it's like, should I make, like, should I just do it right now? But, like, it's been so long already. I'm just going to go ahead and stop here. If I have to make a super short episode next week, that'll be fine. Like, it's it's a risk you take when you do stuff blind. But, uh, yeah, let's just see what else happens next week. Uh, so thank you guys so much for being here. I think you would appreciate every second you guys have been a part of this. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you're bursting at the scenes with questions like I am. It's a really interesting way they've done the story and the telling. I just don't know what to expect and it makes me it might make me sound a little more frustrated than i actually am i'm kind of enjoying myself i am enjoying myself but it's like i i'm just so like flummoxed most of the time i can follow a story pretty well even when it tries to get really confusing but this one really keeps throwing me these odd curveballs i just don't really see coming nor do i understand like kind of like the the thought behind it but i'm i'm hoping it pays off because it's, it, it has the potential to really land some solid ha hammer blows. I just don't know. I, I just, I'm not sure what to expect. Um, it's kind of funny because this is how I thought about Muvlov Extra when I started it. Like, I was really kind of flummoxed to be like, I heard this thing was pretty good. Like, I, got, I read some basic reviews. People were like, this stuff's amazing. I was just like, it's, it's good, but I'm just not sure I'm seeing what I was expecting to. And boy, did that series deliver. So... I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt for sure, and I hope you'll do the same. But yeah, 
Let me know in the comments, what do you think? You got any questions? If you happen to know any answers to specific questions I, I asked, I'd love to hear it. But thank you so much to the patrons who have made this so possible and how just making this a good experience and giving their input as always. Look forward to the next patron cast, which is coming out probably in a, in a week or two. We're gonna have to see, um, scheduling's getting a little wacky, so I have no idea what to expect in the near future of like, of like channel stuff, but uh, I might try and explain a bit about that. But like, I, I gotta keep some stuff close to my chest until I know for sure, so we'll just have to wait and see. But you know what? I really am excited to be here, so thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching these videos with me. I appreciate it. And until next video, watching me, you ever see me next. I'll see you there.